Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from every guy, Redonkulous Guy, and welcome back to the latest. So, in the last episode, we started developing photos for Hana, but it turned out to be pretty messed up because of the ghost, if you remember the Hana arc. Yeah, so we got to this choice whether to show it to Hana or to Ash. Well, I chose to show it to Hana. We went the next morning, had a great time with Luke. And also had a very very great time with uh, Hana and Marianne. Had a little fun, friendly chat, some serious talk about some stuff. And also we met with Father Norman, who was not normal anymore. He got really freaked out seeing us, or more of seeing the ghost behind us. And uh, yeah, it just did not turn out well. Well, it's my fault only considering we brought him over there. But uh, he would have been there nonetheless cause uh, we got to know about that in the HANA arc so yeah we stopped right here after meeting father Norman and now we are gonna continue from here let's go moon is well into the night sky by the time I make it back home I heavy treads and the sound of traffic outside echoing in my ears filling the empty room with some semblance of life Nana would scold me if she ever hears me walk like that but after today, I really can't give a damn about everything. The mattress creaks under my weight as I unceremoniously flop down on it and I find myself looking at the paper under my grip. As promised, Miss Wright had my bike delivered back to my apartment. Found it parked in the rack downstairs with an invitation and a note tacked to it in fact. Be there, it said. If only it were that easy, but it will give me a chance to talk to her about that thing in their house. With a sigh, I let my hand fall to the side of the bed along with the invitation. And yeah, we also decided not to show the photo because uh, yeah, I felt like maybe things would just go bad considering how beautiful time we spent with Hana and considering we know what or how it's gonna end up with so I was like let's not mess it up so yeah I will think about it tomorrow when my head end muddled with thoughts of a headless woman and the haunting smiles of a ghost lately it occurs to me I haven't eaten anything since I left this morning and an empty gnawing ache makes itself known but I can't bring myself to stand up today was a complete waste of time and frankly a disappointment I don't like this. The lack of certainty, the disquiet, the lack of stable ground to stand on, the part where I do not know what will come tomorrow. Ever since that damn letter, everything has been thrown out of the loop. I wish everything stayed the same. Routine would have been easier to make sense of than this. Closing my eyes, I let the noise from the streets below lull me to sleep. At the very least, that's the one thing that hasn't changed. Okay, it's the next day or oh, wait a minute. Is it next day? Okay, actually this is not the next day. This is the next to next day. This is in fact after Yeah, let me show you this is after the Hana arc or After the day where uh, yeah, as you can see she slaps him and uh, Then it's the next day over here where we are right now the melody carries into the hall long before I cross the threshold Solemn but gentle and soothing, a reminder of what is what home is. Past firm but meaningful gaze, mass wistful smiles, the bomb rays filtering through the eaves at sunset, the distinct smell of wet earth and leaves after a long day's rain in our home. In the room, Ma and Pa's pride and joy, a place where we were once promised several springs ago. Yet, yet it won't stop. No way! I'll be good this time! Please don't leave! Please stay! The floorboards are cold under my feet, more than it usually is. The walls more forbidding than it than what I'm used to. Farther and farther the room goes. Mass singing stops and Pa... I can't hear Pa. Not hear... Not about the raucous clanging and the deafening roar of gunshots nor the screams replacing the comforting small soft melodies. There is only the blinding fear. But when the light breaks, 
Her skin has already taken a sicky pale color, rotten in most parts, blood dripping from every open gash and lysium on her body. Bony hands grip Hana's neck like a noose, staining the skin underneath with a vibrant shade of scarlet. Nothing but malice fills the gleam in her eyes. A scream ripples through the air. My whole body feels distant. Every limb heavy with lead, all unable to move at will. Not even so I can wipe the beads of sweat forming at my temple. The rasping of breath easily fills the room in the wee hours while I force it back into a steady rhythm. There is a tightness in my chest I can't shake off, my heart pounding against it as if it's about to burst out. Something cold has settled in my legs. Not the usual chill that comes and goes with passing breeze from the window, but one strong enough to sting, shackle, and leave a frigid sensation creeping up my skin. With every struggle I make, the pressure winds firmly around my legs, tighter and tighter and tighter, all until it becomes too much. My heart stops. Another draft sweeps into the room and brings with it the iron tang of blood, thick, suffocating, filling my nose with foul, sickening smell as I shift my gaze towards, sorry, downwards, and it slowly comes into view. Whoa, mouth stretched in a hideous smile and eyes brimming with nothing but madness. The stench of gore taints the air around me and I can't look away. From it, her, from the terror and death that her uncanny, twisted features alone scream. I try to open my mouth, to shout, to ask for any help, but my voice has left my body altogether. All I have is the painful realization that no kind of plea will ever save me from her. Then suddenly the bed dips. Oh my god, holy moly, that was crazy, like imagining that really happening is all the more crazy. Whoa, so we have two more crazy things to deal with, our tragic past dreams and in that too, the ghost. Oh my god, I pity for Zack man, brutal, brutal plunge back into myself jerks me away. There is no ear splitting scream, no wild thrashing of limbs, just a painful constricting awareness that something has wound itself tightly around my neck. I wish no second pulling it a blanket away but allow myself a few minutes to steady my breathing before getting off the bed. Inhale, hold, exhale. One step, two steps, three. But the dreams have gotten worse. Ever since two days ago, no longer are they the small cursory flashes that I'm used to, but vivid ones that linger. And with the ghost now, I can still feel the blood in my hands, the putrid smell of rotting flesh, the sickening crunch of bones breaking with every movement, and our cold, chilling eyes as they bore into me. I draw in one long, ragged breath, and before I know it, I'm walking out the door. Even in the waking world, it reads. Ah, the question is, uh, we never. I, I thought it would move on to the next day. That is, we go to the party where I thought we would get a little eyesight or hindsight on, you know, what Zach's thought was on all of this. Although we see all about that in the Hana's R two, considering the choices. But uh, wow, this is after the slapping event in the Hana arc according to my choices so wow let's see if you will talk about that or not so a bench on the park is far from the most private place for thoughts in looks bone considering its location at the heart of a bustling city but in the early hours of the morning it provides enough peace and quiet for any poor problematic soul who happens to wander here the city is just waking up a little later than usual but knowing what day it is, one can't fault it for being a little 
Tavli just this once. Yet neither the pleasant morning chill nor the soft twittering of birds does anything to banish the images. Every single one has rooted itself in my head, its claws deeping, sorry, digging deep in what is no longer a safe place to hide in. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, it falling used to down. be. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Take it, it, a key and lock him up. It used to be easy up, finding some pretense of peace under the guise of sheer up, optimism following lady. regular routine. Now, now I don't know what to make of it. Who is this kid? Sometimes it's easier to run, easier to hide when everything's falling apart. That way, you don't have to be the first to witness witness it when it does. Oh my god. It worked when things went bad with the movie after all. I was like, are you done? It also worked when my power taken from us. Though the sentiments a are a little hypocritical, when you think about my little talk with Miss Wright the other day, but that's just how it is. Maybe it really is better if I just... Hey, mister! Who are you, London Bridge? My god! Hey, mister, the tiny voice gives me a pause. So it was you, London Bridge? My god! When I look up, a little girl, maybe about six or seven, is peering at me. Two wide eyes overflowing with what can only be the natural curiosity one typically sees in children. I vaguely note the scent gritty uniform she's wearing before returning our greeting. Uh, hey kid. Kylie. Oh, this is Kylie. Wow. So you are that goddaughter, something something, which was uh, mentioned in the Hannah's arc. Kylie. That's my name. Mama said it's rude not to call people by their names. She then flops down on the empty space beside me. Her little legs, still too short to touch the ground, swings in tone with a song she hums under her breath. I don't mind kids. Nana would often invite the ones in our old neighborhood to give them treats. Of course, by then sis and I were both too old to play with them. But to get used to the commotion eventually, it's not completely as unpleasant as most people would imply. Kylie seems to be a well-behaved kid. Anyway. Oh, sorry. Uh, nice to meet you, Kylie. Is Mama here? No, but my big brother's with me. He's taking pictures with his camera over there. I wonder who he is. He, she points to the far end of the park, the one closest to the street where a kid is taking shots of something above him. It doesn't look to be birds because all there is on that side of the parks are buildings. I don't see what's so interesting with the tip of a building though. I'd take pictures of dogs if I were him. They're cuter. Do you have a camera you too, cute. mister? Uh, yeah, I'm actually a photographer. Mama said I'm too young to get a camera. I'm sure your mama will eventually give you one. But won't you be late for school like this? Big Brother will get us there on time. Rowan promised Papa. We aren't going to be late. It's sports day. So it's not good if you keep looking like that today. If it ends up raining and we lose, it's your fault. All right, I'll try not to upset the clouds today, kid. Is it because you're sick, mister? Before I know it, a smile has spread over my face. They say kids ask the toughest questions sometimes, and they sure do with how sincere Kylie looks. Line feels like doing her a huge disservice. No, not sick. Just having a very, very bad day. Why is that? Is that like when my big brother ate all of my pudding? He did that once and I cried. It wasn't very nice of him. Yeah, I think you see there's this mean girl. She's given my friends and I a lot of trouble. Hard to keep up when things are like that, you know? Especially when you can't do anything. It's kind of scary. Makes you wish things will just stay as peaceful as they used to be. Maybe she just wants to be friends with you? I highly doubt that. She already hurt one of my friends. What if she's just sad? Or, or maybe she just wants help? That's what happened with Melody. I let her borrow my crayon when she left hers. Now we're playmates. 
It's not really the same thing, Kylie. What she did, they're pretty bad things. Hmm. I still think there's another reason. Did you try talking to her? That's what Mama said I should do. <laughs> I don't think that'll work either. You haven't even tried yet. You sound like Rowan. You're just scared, mister. That strikes a chord. Maybe it's the honesty in her tone or simply the truth in the words itself. I don't know why, but I can't help it. <laughs> I laugh. Loud enough to disturb an elderly couple taking a leisure walk nearby. Why are you laughing? <laughs> That's nothing. You're a really smart kid, you know that? That's what I have been doing, ain't it? Go full speed ahead, then backtrack when the going gets tough. Stay in my safe zone because that's all I know. Once Dr. Navarro said I should be the first one willing to deal with my problems before anyone else, I didn't show up on our next appointment after that. But he's right. And though I hate to admit it, knowing what I've seen, but the kid makes a good point too. I've been so caught of thinking there might not be a way out. Maybe there isn't, or maybe there is. But that doesn't mean I should just leave it up to fate. You better get to school, though, or you'll miss sports day. You should've won yourself some awards, all right? All right. Can I show it to you when I do? That can cheer people up, right? In the distance, her brother calls for her, and I took that as a sign to leave. Got things to do, to face, the first few steps, they say. Nah, I'm good now, I think. Thanks to you. Besides, uh, Mr. Needs to go, but you should show it to Mama and Papa. I'm sure they'll be proud of you, Kylie. I will! Thanks, mister! I give her a little pat on the head before heading my way. A small gesture of thanks from a stranger she didn't know she might have felt. She may not understand it now, even though at such a young age she already has this understanding of things. But maybe when she's older... And the world no longer seems too big for her. But aren't you going to help me, mister? With what? Confused, I glance back. Oh my god! What? I was gonna say she's cute, but what all? What is this? Whatever cheer our little talk brought has vanished under the shadows, suddenly dancing in my eyes. What the hell is wrong with her now? This frigid air is most definitely not how the morning chill should feel like. Bitter, stinging, unwelcoming. And the kid. What do you think, mister? Are you going to help me? Leave us alone! What do we do to you? The response never comes, however, because when I blinked, gone. Hello? Mister? Are you okay? For several passing seconds, I let my stare linger on her face, waiting for any sign of another change. But all that remains in there is the carefree smile of a child, none of the spite, none of the cold, bloody smile. Nothing. I really need to go, Kylie. It, it was nice meeting you. See you again, mister! <laughs> I break into a run. I don't look back. Not even as I bump into a couple of passerbys. As soon as I am out on the busy streets. Going insane. This is what it is. And if we don't do something soon, we all will. Oh my god, that was crazy! Whoa! But nonetheless, she was cute, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like her character, like, I'm pretty sure she was not the ghost. It's just that we were delusioning, or not delusioning, she just appeared in the form of like that. And you know what happens when you are being chased by a ghost. So yeah, that's what happened over there. <laughs> so the tremors follow me even as I get home. I had hoped a little stroll around the block for a few hours would help. Instead, I'm assaulted with more images of her, her smile, the loathing in her eyes, the stench of core, the horrid crunch that comes with every movement she makes. Even old memories have been sullied by her, 
and Ma's song no longer sounds as sweet as it meant to be. In the end, all I got is a sinking feeling I will never be rid of her image and another ridiculous idea that may or may not even work. The sun is already hanging low on the horizon when I make it back. And for the first time, coming home feels more like a chore. Only I didn't arrive to an empty room. Because as soon as I open the door, I'm greeted by none other than... Subsy man! I told you we should have called him before going here. It's fine. It is Ashton I see first, sitting comfortably on my couch, munching on a bag of chips with both feet propped atop the coffee table. Whatever proverbial stone has made a home at the pit of my stomach automatically flies right out the window at the side of him. But before my exasperation can set in, my attention is taken by the other occupant in the room. Isabella perches on the only other chair in the room, attempting to make herself smaller, it seems, from how closely she is hugging her arms against her. Nevertheless, she gives me a small smile when she notices my style. Yet somehow there ain't any mom in it like it's supposed to have. Hey, Zach. Sorry we just barged in here. Ash was... Relax. Z-Man gave me a copy of the key himself. Only after you broke the 13th one. I can't keep replacing them every time you think it'd be a good idea to break into my apartment. And stop calling me Z-Man! I didn't break anything this time. Ash, just because I gave you a key doesn't mean you can just stroll in here whenever you want to. And... Hey, is that my... Ash smirks at me because, of course, he has the gall to smirk knowing what he did. He pops in what's very likely the last piece of chip into his mouth and folds the wrapper neatly on the table before throwing it on the nearby trash. From her chair, Isabella shoots me an apologetic smile as soon as the foil hits the waste bin with a dull thunk. Common sense dictates that I should be angry, but after everything, having something normal play out in front of me, no matter how childish their antics can get, I can't bring myself to muster even a tad bit of it. Behind me, the television starts blaring the music for the end credits of a movie. They have likely been waiting for a while if Ash has gotten impatient enough to rummage through my cupboards and watch something. Of course he eats all of it. You know, I was saving that for the weekend. Did you at least share some with Bella? Don't worry about it. I'm good, Zach. Really? <laughs> It's free food, you know. What was that you usually say? You don't say no to free food. <laughs> what happened? No, I'm just not hungry. Ash only shrugs at the question in my eyes. I can't be the only one who finds this vibe she's giving off to be odd. And the guy has no doubt already caught wind of it. Aye? Aye, 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 aye. But if you want something, just say so. I've got a fully restocked pantry right here at your disposal. Still not a five-star level thing, but for an empty stomach, it do. Just say the word. Thanks, Zach. Maybe next time. Food is not really what we came here for. Oh my god, is this because of my choices in the Hana arc? I... we... Ash... he's the one who... She casts, casts brief glance at Ash and in an instant, he sits up. Every trace of amusement is gone from his face as he claps his hand in front of him and leans forward. A minuscule gesture meant to ease, yet the grim expression on him tells a different story altogether. All right, you two, what's this about? I don't like those looks. A short but tense pause follows. They are both stalling. Under normal circumstances, I had wait. With these two, the more you force it, the more they will ca clamp down on it. But as a handful of seconds continue to slip by, the unsettling feeling in me also grows with it. Soon it turns into impatience. Before I can demand a response, though one of them finally speaks up. It is Isabella who breaks it first. We just thought we should check on you. After what happened to Rose, I... Please don't tell me something happened again. No, nothing. None so far. And we're keeping it that way as much as possible. Ash, it's not that easy. This isn't some... We don't know that. Let me... 
The bitter frustration in his tone is impossible to miss, but he catches it as soon as Isabella draws back. He allows himself a moment to breathe before dropping it for one less harsh, more tempered, gentler. Let me look at this first, okay? I agreed to help, but you've got to let me handle things from now on. I already told you everything. There must be something we're not seeing in this just yet. We'll sort this out, but no more silly ideas and running around on your own. You're making people worry more than necessary. Becca, especially. So everything's fine? Depends on who you're asking. How are things with you? Anything odd? Good, I guess. Admittedly, how things went down at the housewoman party last night threw me off a bit. I'm not asking about that. Remember the letter thing Isabella's been yapping on about? I'm asking about that kind of odd. I look at him. Gabed, more like. His serious expression doesn't waver despite the perplexed look I showed him. There is a brief second I let pass as I wait for the heavens to fall somewhere. Because, ah, oh, in the Isabella arc, as we know, she figured out something, some way of, like, you know, this uh, disappearance of the BRC members where she works at. And this letter has some kind of a connection. And maybe this is what she's gonna tell. Maybe we will finally know what's up. It doesn't come. The sky is still bathed in vibrant reddish hues as it waits for the night to arrive. Luxbourne is still the same busy city and everything in my room still appears as it did a second ago, including the unnerving ticking of my wall clock. But if Ashton come, who collected always logical Ashton takes interest in this, something or someone must have fucked shit up somewhere. Well, the dreams, they're... They're a lot worse than usual. There's a woman now, ever since we saw that letter. I don't know if it's the same one Isabella talked about. Maybe it is, maybe it ain't. I don't, I really don't want to go back to sleep sometimes. Last night was the worst. Anyway, why, why are you asking about this? Rose's death isn't just a coincidence, Zack. It may have something to do with, I may have. Wait, 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 stop right there for a sec, Bella. I thought you ain't buying this stuff, Ash. Just the other day, you said the exact same thing. I still don't, but even Rebecca, out of all people, claims there's something. Whatever this is, someone has got to look into it. Everything about this screams shady. Are you sure you even have the time? Ain't you busy with your current case? I got taken off that one. You didn't say you were taken off your case. I just got the news this morning. Apparently, the higher-ups think I'm doing a horrendous job at it. It doesn't matter, though. If these two cases are connected like I initially thought, then regardless, I'm on the right track. Whoa. Are you sure we should even be doing this? Doing what, exactly? There's some place we'll visit after this. Too vague for comfort, Ash. And please don't tell me you're bringing her with you. This affirmation comes in the form of a stare, but that alone says all I need to know. What I pointed out gives him a pause, though, and his voice is thick with hesitation when he addresses Isabella. You know what? Zack's right, Isabella. You don't have to come with me. It's not myself I'm worried about. It's you! I'll just do this myself, if it'll get you into more trouble with your superiors. At least I can make up an excuse why I need to be there. Don't be ridiculous. You're not walking in there without me. Besides, I think it's a little too late to back out now. Have you two seen the news this morning? I haven't, actually. Mama... Mama called, and... I was busy. The change in the air around her, blissed, small, cannot have gone unnoticed, and it takes every willpower not to ask. Probably the only thing regaining in my curiosity is the fact that Ash himself haven't brought it up either. No problem. It should be in the afternoon news as well. He grabs the remote and cycles through numerous channels until he gets to a news report about another guy who has been found dead in the early hours of the morning today. Worried alive this time. Oddly, no fire has spread and whatever damage has been contained within the place the body was found. The room itself, however, has been completely vandalized. Help me. Help me. Help me. Another murder, the authorities claim. Isabella and I knew better. 
None of us shifts even after the report ends, but the room has suddenly felt stifling. Ashton's eyes have gone hooded with what appears to be restrained anger, and the remote in his hands, I mean hand, creaks mildly under his grip. The stone is back in my stomach. A tiny little thing gripping at my insides, growing with every passing second as the dread sinks in. In the thick of it, Isabella's voice is the one that breaks the hush. A small, weak thing on its own that wavers unevenly between words, but every syllable heavy with meaning. This is because of that thing, isn't it? I did this somehow. When it fades, all that's left in the air is her doubt and fear, while all we can do is to cope. Is there something I can say to make her feel better? Let's save. So, yeah, let's say we can still fix this. Let's be positive about this. It ain't too late. We, we could still fix this. There's three of us here. Four if you count Rebecca. No, she's, she's staying away from this. She lifts her gaze at me, eyes steady and shoulders squared as she holds it against the baffled look I give her. Although in the next second it immediately softens and it takes me by surprise. Nevertheless, in those brief moments, it's like I faced a different person. I don't want to involve her in this any more than I already have. Both of you as well. I already said it. That's completely out of the question. Stop asking. Still in all, that's two extra heads who can do the thinking. Between us three, I'm sure we'll figure something out pretty soon. Don't make this whole thing sound like it's a piece of cake to deal with. It ain't. But better than sitting around here, yeah? plan is still a plan. Yeah. You're going to shoot yourself in the foot one day with that kind of thinking. We don't even know who's doing this. The last two murders might just be similar incidents done by two different suspects. <laughs> Hasn't stopped you from going after them before. Remember that time when you... Okay, stop right there. There will be no retelling of that incident today, Z-Man. Or ever. <laughs> Keep calling me Z-Man and maybe I will. <laughs> Suddenly, Isabella laughs. Though muffled by her hands, it brings light and easy against the thick tension in the air. Still a far cry from the usual cheer she carries, but brings a welcome shift in the otherwise dreary mood. Thanks, you two. I'll tell you about it when he's not around. Give it up, Z-Man. She's not interested. Who says I'm not? <laughs> Ash makes a face but chuckles at the chest despite himself. Why am I even friends with you two? And like this, most of our worries ebb away if only for a few moments. They take their leave mere minutes close to sundown. But regardless of the lighter mood, little has been said of their plans, only vague hints of what they are aiming to do after. While it ain't of my business to know, something about this whole thing still gnaws at me. A tiny, tiny passing thought urges me to do something as well. At this hour, the streets are once again busy with people heading home after a hard day's work. Little of the bustle matters to them as they step out the crowded walkway, however, Ash especially, there's only his goal in his mind and I wager there's nothing I can do to stop him at this point. He's probably decided on it before long they made the decision to drop by, but despite this, Isabella lags behind. A worried crease is back on her forehead as she watches Ash leave to get his car. Something wrong, Bella? No, I... Actually, can you take home Becca for me after this? I really didn't get the chance to tell her where I'm headed off to. Tell her I'm okay and we're... No, just that. That's all. You sure I should skip on that part? If she finds out about this, she'll be angry. I don't really want to deal with angry Rebecca. It gives me a stomach ache just thinking about it. Neither do I, but I'll handle it if she gets mad. Just make sure she's safe and tell her to be careful. You too. Take care of yourself. I... Ob almost abruptly she pauses, the gaze in her high, sorry, eyes hardening as she lapses into another one of those long distant silences from earlier. Oh, she's seeing it again? This ain't just because of the whole fiasco with, with the letter anymore. I don't want what happened to Rose to happen to you guys as well. This one. This one cut deeper. 
Before I can ask about it, Ashton returns, casually swinging his car keys on one hand and gestures at Isabella. Come on, we don't have much time. Shirley's waiting. Who's sure? Oh, right. Don't answer that. I don't want to hear it, you huge dork. Says the person who gave her stuffed toys names. Batcat? Really? It's cute. Yours is just weird. I'll see you later, Zack. She spares me another smile and as I watch her walk off, only now did it occur to me that none of those she gave today ever did reach her eyes. I make a grab for the back of Ash's parka. He staggers briefly before correcting himself and shooting me a confused glare. Is she alright? Stare. Is she all uh, What? Who's okay? Isabella. She's been, I don't know, out of it today? Did something happen earlier? The scowl on his face says it all. She's actually been like that this morning. I'll ask, but... Just do me a favor and watch over her. We have no idea what we're dealing with. I don't know what happened to her since the last time I saw her. But from how she's been doing today, whatever it is, it seems like a pretty big deal. Wait, you didn't annoy her again, did you? Because I swear to God, if you did, you've got another thing coming for you. What? No. Why would I? I'm just asking. I'll take your word for it. But if you can find out what's bothering her, that'd be nice. Honestly, I don't think it's the letter this time. I'll see what I can do. Make sure you keep yourself out of harm's way, all right? Yeah, you too. Don't do anything reckless again. Reckless, no. But I can't make you the promise I won't do anything. After seeing that, there's no way in hell I'm going to pretend there ain't a problem when there is. This is a really big one. And I'll be damned if I let anything happen to you guys while I sit here. I'm done running when things get tough. He's about to argue for a moment, but... Look, bro, if things ain't good, I'll be the first one out. But allow me this one thing, I Just this one time. If it doesn't work out, you'll be the first one to know. You can laugh then, or berate me all you want. But please don't ask me to step aside like I'm incapable of doing anything to help. I have no idea if it is the look on my face or the tone of my voice. Ultimately, although his mouth presses into a thin line, he nods. Alright, stay safe, Zack. When he stumbles into the sidewalk and allows the afternoon crowd to swallow him whole, I like to think the tiny gleam in his eye, eyes is the closest we can get to optimism in this situation. Whether that alone will be enough to give me a peaceful sleep tonight remains to be said. Let's see about that. Sunday. Night falls, and despite my best attempts, sleep continues to elude me. With her image still stuck in my head, flashing every moment, sorry, few moments, it catches me off guard. With mass lullaby still echoing in my ears, no longer the soft tune it once was. And the terrible gnawing in the pit of my stomach, it's no wonder I can't bring myself to drift off even for a while. It's not as if there is a complete lack of things to do while waiting for sleep to come, if it ever will. And at quarter to three in the morning, I find myself cleaning my photography equipment for no other reason than just to pass time. Though if I am going to be honest, it is not the night terrors that are keeping me wide awake tonight, but the anxiety and the hope I will hear from Ash and Isabel or Isabella soon. And for what's perhaps the 42nd time, my eyes shift over to the end of the table where my phone lies still. I have not heard from them since they left. They haven't promised a call, of course, but a small part of me wishes they would have the common sense at the very least. Wedding is a tough game, and with the concerns stretching out the minutes far longer than usual, it's impossible for more unpleasant thoughts not to enter my mind. Moreover, it does not help that when the clock finally strikes 3, my hand steals. It will be complete and utter lie to say my heart didn't leap straight into my throat in that brief second. My whole body has gone motionless, ears straining for any further sounds. A, s a couple of 10 seconds pass, nothing. Of course, with how old the building I'm staying in, pa power fluctuations in anything new. Every now and then this would happen, leaving a few tenants in a rather bad mood. 
and and no, nothing unusual anymore after a few years of living here but this time the sudden hush brings with it a stillness that raised the hair at the back of my neck and set my heart beating hard against my chest something reeks in the air and in an instant this place is no longer home it's a prison every rational fiber in my being screams at me to leave i force myself to swallow and keep a clear head as i lay down all my cleaning tools and begin gathering together the rest of my things scattered about on the table the camera's body lenses filters diffuser phone anything my hand could reach but in the resulting panic i like in the nightmares it is the scent that reaches me first a foul putrid smell filling my lungs with the heavy stink of death my fingers clamp tightly to the camera holding it closer to my body as if the tiny thing would provide enough protection to whatever it is with me in the room it won't but it's the only comfort i have hello i, I know you're in here what do you want something moves behind me a soft scuttling over the walls followed by the squelch and painful creaking of what can only be rotten flesh and broken bones without hesitation i whirl around my fingers and camera ready patiently waiting for another movement leave leave now there's nothing here for you there's a brief moment of silence after and for a short while i think my pleas worked uh oh then with no warning the shuffling resumes and along with it are the sobs of a woman oh 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 my god the light flashes fleetingly one last time allowing me a glimpse of her grotesque this happened features before it is once again lost in the darkness i was absolutely expecting some kind of a mini game like this wow that was so good all of a sudden her tune changes no longer a soft cry but a high pitched shriek brimming with pain grief and anger every ounce of courage i have mustered flees from my body at the sound and the next thing i know my hand is gripping the knob and i am wrenching the door open her wails follow me as i flee into the night whoa pacing has always been more of ashton's thing than mine when i want to think i sit and let the minutes tick by until an idea comes to my mind or my pulse settles down and yet dried leaves and two eggs crack under my shoes as i make another pass at them terror is too mild to describe what this is there's no way in hell i'm going back whatever she is pleading won't work the moment we saw that letter she's been after us but i can't run not this time nearly 2 hours have gone by since i left the comfort of my room for the solitude of the park to excruciating hours since i've started making calls no one's answering not even rebecca who has always kept her phone line open in case other people need her or isabella who frequently checks hers for any messages and readily responds as soon as she can afford it does not help that ash hasn't said a word where he went off to as well damn it you i should have asked him before i let him leave no him no him he can be anywhere but but there's really only one place he will likely be at this time wait what am i doing here what what am i doing here this is the this is the last place should i should be over here the freaking fact that han is dead <laughs> the sun has already peaked over the horizon when i make it to the mansion i have no idea what i'm expecting to see when i got here that's ashton first and foremost A part of me wishes my assumptions are correct, and he's really somewhere close by on a stakeout. But I've never been the lucky sort when it comes to that kind of guessing. And even after I've made a round of the immediate vicinity, I could find neither hide nor hair of him. Calling him does no good either, considering how awful the signal here is. 
he can't be too far if he's really here. But if he is, he would have already noticed me by now. Instead, there is only silence. The kind too quiet to find any sort of comfort in. Even the trees seem to have fallen asleep with the rest of the mansion, oblivious to what's happening around it, a small island of stillness in the otherwise fast-paced world. No wonder the whole of Anselm feels at odds with the rest of Luxbourne. While the st- city is alive, growing every minute, breathing every second and pulsating with life, the village remains unmoving, unchanged. It's not surprising the legend still, li- still lives up to this day and why she is still here, walking its hallowed halls. Hallowed, yeah. And beyond me, the mansion looms ominously. But now ain't the time for fear. Even if Ash is not here, I've still got to let the brights know what I've seen, what's in their home. Not a good idea after what has happened in this arc. And whatever grievance Ash has with them doesn't matter. There might be grounds for imprisonment, but they don't deserve a brutal death at the hands of one malicious spirit. And I'm sure Isabella would want the same thing. I head straight for their door without a second of thought. Without a second thought. It takes a few rings, the sound loud above the foreboding stillness before I hear footsteps on the other side. Get it, get it. Only a Nazi would knock at such an ungodly hour. Where's that damn butler when I need him? Oh, look at this guy. And what is this black stuff around him? Before long, the door swings widely open with Mr. Luke Wright standing behind it. Seething would be a complete understatement to describe him. Like this, I've got no doubt why Ash would find him a suspect. You, again. It's bloody six in the morning. What the hell is it now? Listen, sir, I know this is not a good time. Oh, it's not a good time. Did you even check the clock before coming here? I bet you didn't. Unlike you, the ones living in this house need to sleep. Come back when people are actually awake, or I'll call security on you. Before I can get a word in, he slams the door to my face and bolts it shut with much finality. Wait, sir, you, you gotta hear me out. You're both in danger if you stay in there. Have you seen the news lately? Everything's not a coincidence. Only silence answers me. Maybe if it was Miss Wright. Oh my god. Oh, who am I kidding? She's already dead. <laughs> there are limits to how far a person will believe in you. Then again, I didn't believe Isabella when she warned us. Now I am here, desperately trying to save people, If even if I am aware it's completely out of my own capacity to do so. Is this what they call karma? If so, this is one horrible way of turning things around. Taking people's life, playing with people's fears, making them feel useless. You're around, ain't you? You here? Inside this house? Listening, watching, or whatever it is that you spirits do? What do you want? You're already dead! Leave us! Nothing. I don't even know who I am talking to or if a sane person is supposed to be doing that. The only thing I guard after is a feeling of foolishness washing over me. Or perhaps this is just me losing my mind. Out of other options and any other ideas, I let my hands slide off the door's surface and fall listlessly to my sides. I can go back to loose bone, try to find the others, try to get out of this mess with them. Or let them know how much in deep shit we all are in. Both sounds good. And either way, I'm loitering here ain't helping at all. I let the quietness calm me for a few more minutes before standing up and heading out to fetch my bike. It's quite a distance to Luxmore, but if I hurry, I will reach it in maybe... The rustling stops as soon as I turn around and strain my ears for any other movement around me. Yo, yo Ash, you there? No answer. If he is here, and I've just missed him earlier. Already my feet is moving in search of him for the second time. It won't hurt to double check. Triple check even. With how big the property is, he can be anywhere. If things ain't so urgent, if they ain't so dire that lives are at stake, I'd probably have just waited for him to show up again. But damn it! He needs to realize what exactly it is he's dealing with. But that 
it is not just a petty criminal he can simply throw in jail that it is something beyond the authority his police badge could ever give him the guy needs to stop playing with the big damn hero sit down and chill my breathing comes in short shallow rasps by the time i make it back to where i started still no sign of him and i'm beginning to think i'm just wasting my time here but that is when i hear it i recognize the melody in a heartbeat mas favorite song i listen for a while trying to gauge where exactly from the house it's coming from my feet starts moving before i can stop them and there as i circle a corner from the room up the second floor there are no lights inside and the windows are shut but i'm sure whoever singing is in there and what hold on a sec there it's difficult to get a decent view from my position but something's odd about that window the marks on the other side rather streaks the color of copper running across white glass panes i can't make out most of it if the strokes are meant to say something miss wright's cleaning crew may have simply missed that room still why i will hear an old tune here of all places i won't know it's an of not it's not an obscure song by all means but it is pretty rare to find someone who knows this and for some reason that seems to follow this song around panic lodges itself at the base of my throat at once whoever's humming might be i don't want to be the pessimist now but on the off chance that it is miss bright shit i shouldn't just barge in there i can put myself in danger before i can save anyone ash will tell me so in the exact same words might even write a dissertation why that is a bad idea if it ain't so lazy damn it damn it damn it god damn it oh my god someone could be in danger a very tough choice to do which we will do in the next episode so hopefully you enjoyed this episode is so intense so good so amazing i'm so excited and so worried at the same time what will happen in any of these choices so we will do it in the next episode so hopefully you enjoyed if you did please click that like button subscribe for more awesome content comment down with your thoughts and i will see you guys next time goodbye shabakat